Hi, AnyQuest here. In a messed up wasteland, Rick gets launched across the damn floor in a fight, and he's seriously freaked out that he might bite the dust. Just then, his mentors come out of the smoke, and instead of giving him some damn first aid, they start praising him for getting so much better in the past two years of training. So he should have no problem with the E-rank adventurer exams now. And the praise feels good, but homeboy still needs some damn medical attention. Normally, all the adventurers in this messed up world are young because it takes a toll on your body. But there are still so damn adults who never give up on their dreams. That's why Rick's still trying to take the entrance exam. He walks up to the desk and asks for his exam ticket. But while the receptionist is checking his info, she recognizes Rick and gets all hyped up, saying they used to know each other. At first, Rick doesn't remember her, but then it clicks that he saw her last two years ago. They used to be co-workers, and she was totally shocked when Rick up and quit his job out of nowhere. And she was even more shocked when she heard he quit to become an adventurer. Rick feels a bit embarrassed because folks in their 30s like him ain't exactly the usual applicants for adventurers. Normally, you start at a low rank as a team and work your way up in a year or two. The receptionist asks what Rick's been up to all this time since she and heard from him. So Rick explains that he was stuck up in the mountains the whole damn time, training with his mentors. Just then, the usual drunkard from the guild stumbles up to the desk, trying to flirt with the receptionist. But when she tries to turn him down because she's obviously working, the guy won't take no for an answer, so he starts getting a little rough with her. That's when Rick decides to step in. He pulls the guy aside and gives him a light tap in the gut, knocking him out cold. The receptionist apologizes for the trouble the drunk guy caused. But Rick says it's all good because he used to work as a receptionist too, and you don't get why the guild thinks it's smart to serve booze in there. After Rick gets his exam number, he heads outside and gets greeted by a maid named Renette. She asks if he's done registering and Rick confirms, thanking her for waiting on him. And while he says that, he's totally checking out Renette's massive rack. She calls him out on it, so Rick tries to change the subject and talk about how pumped he is for the exam. Back inside the guild, the other adventurers are straight up flipping out at the handprint left on the drunk dude's armor. And that armor was made of some heavy-ass steel. So whoever did this gotta be seriously ripped. Right then, two dudes walk in and recognize the drunk guy from a mug shot they saw a while back. His name's Dumold, and he's a badass A-rank adventurer wanted for 30 counts of assault. The receptionist knows it was Rick who laid the smack down, but if he really took out an A-rank adventurer, he might be overqualified for this shit. Meanwhile, Rick's getting a physical exam, and they measure his height as 174 centimeters. The docs are surprised he's taking this test at 32 years old. After that, all the test takers are taken to the next room and told to put their hands on a crystal ball to measure their mana. The ball lights up based on how much mana a person's got. So the others touch it, and they get different results, with the highest being a C. But when it's Rick's turn, that damn ball barely lights up at all. So the examiner gives Rick an F on his mana test. The other candidates start clowning on Rick for having such weak-ass mana as he walks away. But as soon as the examiner calls for the next candidate, the ball straight up shatters. The next test is to measure their offensive skills. They gotta wail on a green rod as hard as they can. It's some special slime bag that can take a beating, so they don't gotta worry about breaking it. Rick remembers training on that slime bag once, and his mentor told him he had to be able to wreck a golden slime bag with just his fists. Rick thought that was impossible because a golden slime bag's as hard as a dragon's fang. But his mentor said it was the bare minimum if Rick wanted to be a true adventurer. And since his mentor could crush one with a single punch like it was nothing, Rick got motivated to train until it broke, even if he had to punch it 50,000 times a day. He hated that shit, but back to the present, the candidates are lining up to smash the bag with all their might. And after the first dude kicks it, they call up the second son of the Dire Moot family. Rumor has it his magic is as strong as a C-rank adventurer's, even though he's only 11 years old. As the kid steps up, he straight up unleashes a hellfire spell and everyone including Rick is damn surprised about what just happened. But Rick's actually surprised because that spell was small as hell. The fireball shoots out and hits the target and even the judges are impressed by the kid's power. And that's when Rick's even more shocked because the fireballs his magic teacher had used to toss at him were way deadlier than what this kid just pulled off. Rick naturally assumes the kid's fireball must have been as strong as his teacher's, but maybe the kid scaled it down so it wouldn't wreck the whole damn building. As the power test continues, it eventually comes around to Rick's turn. But as he's walking up to the slime bag, the examiner stops him and asks if he's really over 30 years old. Rick answers yeah, so the examiner straight up tells him he's too damn old for this shit. Training doesn't usually amount to much unless you start real early in life. And with his weak ass mana scores, he should just quit before he embarrasses himself. Rick knows people be judging him for being old and he feels like throwing in the towel. 
but he's put in way too much work to get here, punching slime bags till his knuckles were bleeding, and he never stopped swinging. All that pain's got count for something. So even if he's at a disadvantage because of his age, he's gonna give it everything he's got. Rick winds up his punch, and when he connects with the bag, it straight up explodes and goes flying through the wall, leaving everyone including Rick dumbfounded because he wasn't expecting the bag to be such a pushover. The kid can't believe what he just saw, and he's pissed off by Rick's success because this was supposed to be his time to shine. But he's willing to lose to Rick for now because his specialty is straight up defensive magic. He's planning on outperforming Rick in the next test. But by the time they start the next test, the kid's left speechless because Rick just tanks a fourth major spell like it's nothing. The examiner gives Rick props for blocking his attacks, and Rick appreciates it because he's doing his damn best. The instructor thinks Rick ain't giving it his all because he's been using only first order spells to defend himself. So he advises Rick to use higher level defensive magic from now on. But Rick tells him he doesn't know any other spells except first order ones, so he's really doing the best he can. The examiner can't believe Rick's limited to first order spells because his mana control is on point. But Rick assures him there won't be no problems, because from what he's seen so far, his first order spells should be more than enough to handle whatever the examiner throws at him. The examiner takes that shit personal, so he's ready to unleash a fifth order spell on Rick to teach him a lesson. He casts the spell and lets loose a shock cyclone that sends a massive shockwave rippling through the whole damn kingdom. It's so damn loud that even a knight on the other side of town can hear that shit. A few minutes later, Sylvester rolls up to the exam center to see what the hell's going on. They tell them some F-rank adventurers straight up wrecked a slime bag with their bare hands and blocked a fifth order spell like it was nothing, all while using basic defense magic. Sylvester thinks they're playing some sick joke, but they dead ass serious with what they just said. Right now, Rick's grinding through the written part of the exam and he looks hella confident in his knowledge. Once the test is done, he takes a break with Rionette, and she asks how he did on the written shit. Rick says that without any doubt, you will get 100% on that shit. After all, he spent 14 years as a damn receptionist at the guild, so there's no way he will fail. But he's still unsure if his overall score is gonna cut it to pass the exam. Renette asks if Rick's worried about his practical exam scores, but he thinks he did pretty damn well in all the categories. The only problem is he got a big fat F on his mana exam. So he ain't sure how that gonna affect his chances. Renette tells him not to trip because he trained his ass off for this exam. But before they can catch a breather, that kid from earlier storms up to Rick and starts screaming at him for doing too damn well on the tests. Rick's clueless about what the hell is going on, so he figures Freed must be lost or some shit and offers to help him out. But Freed is pissed because this was supposed to be his day to show off his mad skills to all the peasants and Rick went and outshined him. So now he's crying like an annoying baby. Rick tries to explain he ain't mean to steal his spotlight, but then Freed's sister shows up. And when she sees her little bro crying, she flips her shit and starts yelling at Rick. Rick asks if she's related to Freed or some shit, and she introduces herself as Angelica the big sister. But Freed wastes no time telling her that this 40-year-old man ruined his day. Rick's offended and says he's only 30, but Angelica and Freed keep calling him a 40-year-old man. Eventually, Angelica throws her glove at Rick, challenging his ass to a duel. Rick dumbass that he is, picks up the glove because he doesn't want to get it dirty or some shit. But little does he know picking up that glove is a declaration that he's ready to throw down. So Angelica happily sets up a spot for them to throw hands. She straight up says she gotta get a kick out of punishing Rick for making her bro cry. But if they gonna do this, they gotta stick to the rules. In the Philheim kingdom, duels let the winner decide the penalty for the loser. So she sets a penalty stating that the loser gotta be the winner's servant for life. Angelica is supposedly some second-class royal knight. But Rick doesn't know how strong this second-class knight is supposed to be, so Renette gives him the lowdown and explains that a second-class knight would be like B-rank. Rick starts freaking out because he knows B-rank adventurers can take down giant monsters solo, but Rena in sweating it and asks Rick to hold back so he don't accidentally snuff her. Rick can't even picture holding back against someone at B-rank while he's stuck at F-rank. He's still got no clue about his true strength, so Renette tells him to trust all the training he's been putting in for the past couple of years. All of a sudden, all the messed up training memories come flooding back and Rick ends up puking his guts out. Rick cusses out Rionette for making him relive all that hell, but she reminds him that if he survived all that crap, he shouldn't have a problem dealing with Angelica. After all, he's been training with the strongest party on the whole damn continent, so he better start believing in himself a bit more. Rick realizes she's right, so he gets up ready to face Angelica fearlessly. He still ain't sure how his current strength gonna hold up against a second-class knight, but it's pointless to worry about that now. Angelica is cocksure she's way stronger than Rick, 
She promises to go easy on him so we go and end up 6 feet under, then she starts powering up her attack. Then she uses Blink Step to zoom past Rick just to flex her speed. They even call her Light Speed Angelica. But Rick is surprised and it ain't for the reason she thinks. Angelica says she's gonna finish him off with her next attack so she uses Blink Step again. But as she's closing in on Rick, he can't believe his eyes because Angelica moving like a sloth. The power scales must have been high on helium if they thought she deserved the Light Speed title because she is moving slower than Rick's regular running pace. Rick easily dodges her strike, and Angelica can't wrap her head around it because it's supposed to be impossible for an F-rank adventurer to keep up with her speed. Only first-class knights ever manage to react to her quickness, so she tries to make sense of it by saying Rick got lucky, but she won't let it happen again. She pulls off another blink step, but to Rick, it's like she's moving in slow motion. He's starting to question how the hell she made it to B-rank with such sluggish moves, He's realizing that maybe he's actually pretty damn strong. Just as he's about to dodge Angelica's attack, she trips on a damn rock and accidentally pulls off some vertical peel blade move. Rick can't predict any of her strikes, so he's struggling to dodge them. And by the time Angelica finally stops herself, he's losing faith in his own strength because he was caught off guard by that attack. But Angelica was caught off guard too because she didn't plan none of that. She tries acting all cool and tells Rick she's impressed that he dodged her last move because she totally meant to do it like that. But that just means she gotta step up her game and go even faster to overpower him. She busts out her special technique that lets her move three times faster than normal. But even with that speed boost, she's still slow as molasses to Rick. But he ain't attacking recklessly because he don't know what kind of tricks she got hidden. So he keeps dodging and Angelica's mind is blown that Rick can still keep up with her. She can only use that technique two more times before she's out of juice, so she gives it her all and goes for one last desperate attack. But she trips again, so Rick tries to intercept her with a punch and ends up blowing a freaking hole in the ground. Angelica realizes she would have been toast if that punch landed, so she's terrified of Rick and wonders who the hell he really is. Rick just says he used to be a receptionist, but now he's an adventurer. He's pumped to keep fighting Angelica, so he climbs out of the hole to face her again. But Angelica straight up surrenders because she doesn't want to get killed. Rick don't get why she's giving up, but her surrender means he's the winner. And because of the penalty Angelica set, she gotta serve him for the rest of her life. Angelica completely forgot about that penalty, so she does the only thing that pops into her head and runs away. Rick don't really give a damn about the bet, so he ain't bothering to chase after her. And the exam results are about to come out, so gotta go back and see if he passed. That's when Renette drops the bomb that the rest of his mentors are coming to check on him. And Rick's freaking out because their arrival always spells trouble. The next morning he rolls into the main exam hall where all the participants are sitting their asses down. This attendant girl comes up and tells them they better have their admit cards on deck because the judge is gonna send some mana their way. They go one by one, and if the card glows red that means they straight up failed and gotta give it another shot next year. But if that shit turns blue, it means they pass that damn exam. Rick's shaking in his boots not knowing what the hell's gonna go down. He looks over at Rianette hoping she can give him some reassurance. She keeps it cool and tells him not to trip and to have faith in himself. He'd been training his ass too damn hard for the past two years, and she personally thinks he's got what it takes to pass. That eases Rick's mind a bit, and he starts thinking about how pretty Renette looks, but at the same time realizes that he must be much older than she is. Renette turns to him and says he ain't gotta worry. Even if he fails, he can always give it another shot next year. But they gonna have to crank up his training intensity by three freaking times. That shit shocks him because he barely survived their regular training. But before he can say anything, his card starts glowing flashing red and blue like crazy, building up that suspense. Finally, it reveals the color to be blue, meaning he freaking passed the exam. He bounces out of the hall with a big-ass smile on his face, rolling alongside Rionette. Then out of nowhere, he catches a whiff of this strong-ass scent and covers his nose. That stench is coming from some flashy dude who strolls up to Rionette and grabs her arm. He introduces himself as Raster, the Duke of the Northern Kingdom. Raster doesn't even give a damn about Rick and starts spitting game at Rionette telling her she's so damn beautiful he wants her as his second wife. Thank God, Rick steps in once again, pissing Raster off. This dude gives him a dark-ass look and asks what the hell an ugly old man wants. Rick tells him straight up that Renette is his girl, and he can't let nobody hit on her. But Raster starts laughing and acts like he can't believe a middle-aged dude like Rick scored a babe like her. He peeps the adventurer exam card in Rick's hand and starts smirking, saying he can't believe someone at Rick's age is only an F-rank adventurer. But Rick fires back, saying Raster doesn't seem too strong himself. Raster straight up disses Rick, calling him a straight up scrub for not recognizing his greatness. 
He brags about becoming an E-rank adventurer at the ripe age of 14 and now being an A-rank adventurer, as well as the examiner for the second stage of the damn exam. He turns to Rinette and straight up asks her to go on a dinner date with him. But Rinette clings to Rick's arm like her life depends on it and tells Raster to bounce because his Kalan is too damn overpowering for her taste. Pissed off, Raster turns around and swears on his mama's grave that he gonna put Rick in his place when the time comes. The next morning, Rick shows up at the exam center and finds out that the second stage gonna be mock battles. That shit scares the hell out of him. Rena tells him to hold back, but Rick says he gotta go all out against these strong ass participants, especially if Raster gonna be his examiner. Suddenly, this dude calls out to Rick and says he gonna be his examiner for the day. That kinda eases his nerves a bit, and the guy tells Rick it's hella inspiring to see a guy his age still trying to become an adventurer. The examiner introduces himself as Lynx and says even he decided to become an adventurer when he was 25, which is pretty late in the game. He'd been hustling ever since. He tells Rick his goal is to become an A-rank adventurer, but damn, it took him 20 freaking years just to hit B-rank. So he ain't even sure if A-rank is possible for him. Rick gives him a pep talk, they shake hands, and before the examiner bounces, he wishes Rick good luck. After that, Rick's feeling pretty good while chilling in the waiting room. Suddenly, this person walks in, opens the door, and says Lynx the examiner got suddenly sick, so Raster gonna take his place for now. At first, Rick don't even think twice because he forgot the name, but Rinette reminds him and he starts freaking out. She tells him Raster is the Duke of the Northern Kingdom, which means he gotta be connected to Knight Angelica and that boy freed in some way. And that's some next level bad news because Rick done humiliated both of them before. The other participants start getting worried too. And they tell him Raster is one ruthless examiner who gets off on torturing the participants who catch his eye. Dude's got the nickname the f rank Crusher because he loves crushing dreams and souls. Rick realizes he did caught more than just Raster's attention. Later we see Raster in the examining arena straight up obliterating a participant with his damn spells, calling him a low-ranking peasant and calls the next unlucky soul forward. Rick be shaking in his boots at this point, pacing around like a madman because he knows Raster gonna straight up murder him. All he wanna do is run his ass back home, but if he does that, his senior's gonna triple his training, and that's a one-way ticket to his death, so he's stuck in a real tight spot. Rinette sits her ass down on the floor and tells Rick that if he can lose so much confidence just because of some people talking, then he gotta be able to gain confidence when she shows him the truth. She tells him he done put in enough work and training to breeze through this damn exam, no matter who he go up against. At this point, he got nothing to lose and everything to gain. That shit really puts things into perspective for Rick, and he thanks Rinette for helping him calm the hell down. Suddenly, the small dude with the hood comes over and asks if Rick wanna know his future. Rick being the dumbass he is, ends up accepting the offer, especially when the guy says it gonna be free. He plops a crystal ball on the table and tells Rick to take his seat. But all of a sudden, Rionette peeps that there's a spell on the chair. Unfortunately, Rick straight up disappears before she can even do something, and that pisses her the hell off. She unleashes an aerial slash, tearing through the crystal ball and the wall behind the dude, who turns out to be freed. She realizes it was teleportation magic and demands free to spill about where he sent Rick. And when he refuses, she straight up uses her finger to slash off his damn eyelashes, threatening that next time she gonna go for his eyes. That shit shakes Freed up and he spills that teleportation is hella complex. Even a genius like him can only teleport someone about 100 meters away, so Rick gotta be nearby. Turns out Rick got teleported behind the exam center near the freaking beach. But before he can even figure out what the hell going on, a crew of all black dressed peeps surround his ass completely. The old butler steps forward and tells Rick they need him to disappear for a bit. They introduce themselves as the elite guards of the Northern Kingdom, so Rick immediately knows it's a damn plan by Raster. The butler says that all the guards are on the same level as B and A rankers, so Rick doesn't stand a chance against them. But then out of nowhere, his seniors show up on a damn cliff, asking what the hell he doing here. Rick gets scared shitless as they drop down from the cliff, so he straight up tells the butler to bounce because their lives are in danger. But one of the bald idiots goes and attacks the orc. And that beast doesn't even flinch because the blade just snaps when it touches his skin. Now the bald idiot tries to throw a punch, but the orc just grabs his fist and crushes it like a tomato. The other seniors ain't even phased by this shit, while the bald dude got no damn clue what to do. To his surprise, the orc cast a healing spell and heals his arm, telling him to practice some more. Then the blonde gangster tells Rick not to worry because he's gonna handle it like the Texans do, and then he whips out a freaking machine gun from God knows where. The guards start attacking him, but you should never bring a knife to a gunfight because he just uses magical bullets to blast them all down and Rick watching all this horror going on. 
Suddenly, one of the guards snatches up this little demon girl named Alice and holds her at knife point, telling the seniors to drop their weapons. Rick's horrified and tells them to let the girl go for their own damn sake, but Alice just thinking these fools playing some game. So the dude ends up smacking her on the head and that shit pisses her off real bad, so she straight up blasts them all away in an instant. The butler slowly starts realizing who these people are because he recognizes them. Alice is some prodigy, the world's strongest vampire mage, and she is only 10 freaking years old. Mazette is half dwarf, half elf, and he is so damn skilled he can make future tech. And Ash, he an or who masters all kinds of support magic and has mad strength and wisdom. The butler claims these peeps belong to the strongest damn party in the whole world, with only s rank members up in there known as the Fist. So Alice goes on dealing with all the guards, blasting them left and right, while Rick hauls Ash back to the exam hall to meet up with Rianette, who straight up slams Freed into a wall soon as she lays eyes on Rick. But before they can even talk, the damn door swings open and Lynx stumbles in looking all beat up. He says Raster forced him to step down as the examiner and locked his ass in the room. He tells Rick to get the hell out of the exam hall for his own safety, but Rick is all pissed off and tells Lynx to chill the hell out. And then we see angry ass Rick marching into the arena, while Raster conjuring up a massive column of fire, ready to put an end to Rick's adventure right here. Before Rick can even step foot in the arena, Raster is out there having a blast, bullying some poor dude who's straight up shaking in his boots. He throws a fireball at the poor guy, roasting him in a hot minute. Now there's this adventurer watching from the stands, and he says that this performance is exactly what he expected from an E-rank promotion exam. This dude suddenly breaks in and introduces himself as Adolf, a popular adventurer. He starts telling the crowd about the four cores of power, physical strength, body control, magic reserves, and magic control. These cores determine how strong and skilled an adventurer is, and Adolf was born with this dope ability that lets him visualize the four cores of power for anyone. He uses his ability on the next contestant and finds out the dude's slightly better in physical strength and body control, but he's still weak. Raster takes him out with just one attack, and Adolf knew this would happen. Then he uses his ability on Raster, and his magic reserves are off the charts, and his magic control is on point two. Adolf exclaims that he is indeed an A-ranked hunter, but then suddenly, his eyes start hurting because looking at powerful folks for too long ain't good for his health. So he shifts his focus to the weakling getting carried away on a stretcher. Suddenly, he spots Rick standing in the corner, and at first glance, Adolf thinks this dude looks hella boring. He's low-key entertained by the idea that someone his age is trying to pass this exam, and he's also curious about Rick's stats. So he uses his ability on Rick, and damn, the triangle of Rick's physical strength, body control, and magic control starts growing way beyond the range of the chart. In just one second of watching him, Adolf's rolling on the ground feeling like his eyes are straight up burning. On the flip side, Elisa comes up to Rianette and says she saw her with Rick yesterday. She introduces herself as Rick's former co-worker from when he was grinding at the guild, and Rianette introduces herself as a fellow party member of Rick. They are getting along just fine when suddenly Alice calls Rianette, asking if she can watch the next match with them. Rianette invites Elisa to see Rick's performance with the rest of the crew, and she's all down for it. But as she gets closer and sees the kinda weird-ass crew, she gets scared as hell when she sees an orc in there. Then that pervert Mazette tries to get Rianette to sit next to him, but she straight up refuses, because she knows he's gonna harass her. Dude immediately switches his attention to Elisa instead, and Rianette introduces her as Rick's ex coworker Right then, Rick walks into the arena, and the wise orc Ash asks Rianette how their old rookie doing. Rianette is confident as hell that Rick gonna ace the test without breaking a sweat. But Elisa mentions that Raster is known to be a devilishly tough examiner. She tells Ash that Raster is an A-rank adventurer, and he uses overpowering force to bring low them low-ranked adventurers. Ash ain't worried about it, and turns his focus back to the upcoming fight. In the arena, Raster all surprised to see that Rick somehow survived the attack from his elite guards. He starts talking about them being incompetent commoners, but a genius noble like him ain't gonna give his opponent no chance to escape. Rick can feel the terrifying aura coming off Raster, matching his magic reserves, and the examiner can see that Rick barely has any magic left. Out of nowhere, Rick asks Raster about the reason he became an adventurer. Raster says he did it because he got a talent for it, and it gonna look good on his noble resume too. But Raster then says that he is already bored with it and gonna quit this job real soon. Those words piss off Rick, who declares he ain't ever gonna lose to a punk like him. Raster laughs, saying Rick gonna learn his place real soon. He decides to start the test with an ice shot magic spell that zooms right past Rick's ear and smashes into the wall. Rick doesn't even flinch to dodge it, and Raster asks if he is so scared he can't even move. Rick doesn't even respond to his taunts because right before the match, Rinette told him to stay cool and watch his opponent's moves for the first minute. 
It took all his patience, but Rick decides to believe in Rianette's advice. Seeing that Raster ain't throwing down, Raster decides to take charge and blasts a class 3 fire magic at him without chanting. Rick straight up takes that magic head on and Elisa starts stressing about his safety. But damn, Rick comes out of the flames unscathed. And Ash tells the receptionist that a puny ass attack like that ain't gonna harm their old rookie at all. Ash asks if she knows about the four power cores and Elisa says that she knows about them. Ash goes on to say that out of the four cores, magic reserves gotta be trained from a young age because as you get older, it gets tougher to increase them. Ain't many folks who can boost their mana capacity after hitting 20, but Rick started adventuring at 30. Ash explains that's why Rick's got a measly amount of mana. So when he was training him, the first thing he said was to always rely on his body. Ash gave Rick his first mission, which was to hit up a nearby village, but he had to do it with a 100 kilo ankle weight. Rick was freaking out already, but then Ash told him to quickly follow him because the forest they were training in was full of dangerous monsters. Rick booked it as fast as he could with the weights dragging him down and that's how his first training sesh ended with Ash. Back to the present, Raster busts out a class 4 wind spell on Rick, but he touts that shit out too. Ash proudly declares that he built Rick's strength from the ground up. Mazette was in charge of teaching him magic control and Rianette helped him boost his body control. Ash goes on to say that Rick faced their grueling training with mad effort. And that's why he already got skills on par with S-rank hunters. Elise is straight up shocked by these words, but the proof's right in front of her as Rick endures another class 4 magic spell from Raster. Rianette tells the receptionist that Rick ain't even aware of his true strength, because Ash kept downplaying his achievements and saying even F-rank adventurers could do that shit. Meanwhile, in the arena, Raster unleashes a deadly combo of different elemental magic spells on Rick, all while calling him a third rate. He smashes him under two massive boulders, thinking he might have gone too far. But damn, Rick comes out of that mess unscathed. Raster's pissed now, so he decides to end this with his fists. He charges his fists with a powerful attack spell and then rushes ahead at Rick with a flash step that his little sister has mastered. But Rick counters Raster's punch with his own and sends him flying back to where he started. Raster ain't got a clue what just went down, but Rick's starting to piece it together. He thinks Raster was born with mad talents, and his magic game is something to flex. But he's lacking in other areas, and Rick thinks it's because he skipped training because of his big ego. So he's damn sure now he won't lose to Raster in any case. On the flip side, Raster decides to unleash his true power and throws a class 3 fire spell at Rick after chanting the whole thing. But damn, Rick blows that spell away with his bare hands, saying he doesn't even need a spell to block weak-ass moves like that. Raster tells him not to get too cocky because his luck saved him once. He tries to zoom ahead at full speed, but he's too slow for Rick who catches up in a damn flash. Raster tries turning his body into steel to block Rick's punch. Even with a heavy-duty defense spell, Raster feels some pain from that hit. He admits Rick's abilities go way beyond E-rank, but he's still damn sure luck played a role in keeping him standing here. Rick asks that he's too scared to admit his own skills, and Raster asks how the hell someone with just a tiny bit of magic juice can get so strong in two years. That question brings up some messed up memories of when he was locked in a dragon's cage until he could kill it, had to sprint through an explosive field and even swam in a paralytic poison lake till he drowned. Meanwhile, Ash is spilling all this to Elisa at the same time if she's losing her mind saying anyone would bite the dust from that shit. Ash says Rick did indeed die, but you brought his ass back to life with your healing magic right after he kicked the bucket. That's how Rick became stronger than anyone else by breaking through his damn limits. Mazette agrees that Rick's a damn hard worker, as he remembers the time he kicked him off a cliff, telling him to feel the wind on his skin to up his magic control. And Alice chucked a massive boulder at him during a spar, he died both times, but Ash revived him. But somehow, he managed to survive Renet's brutal training. Rick wraps it all up by spilling these stories to Raster, who just laughs and tells him to ditch the adventuring job and start writing fantasy tales instead. He asks Rick what kept him going through all that hellish training, and Rick proudly declares that his dream of taking down the ultimate beast known as Kaiser Alsapete pushed him through it all. Raster laughs at him, saying that the monster called Kaiser in the book about the hero Yamato who fought him is just some fairy tale. Rick says he doesn't give a damn about what anyone else thinks because beating Kaiser is still his dream. Raster's had enough now, so he decides to end the battle with his next move. He ties Rick with some strong-ass vines and starts chanting the spell for a class 8 magic which is as high as humans can go. Rick recognizes the spell Raster's chanting, but it's too late because thick branches start sprouting behind him, forming a massive golem. Raster hops inside the golem, ready to finish Rick once and for all. In response, Rick gets ready to blast him with a class 1 wind magic shot. Raster laughs and says that weak-ass magic ain't gonna save him. 
Rick asks him how many damn times he's practiced his spell because he's practiced that air shot a hundred million times. Ain't nobody believing that crazy ass number, but Ash confirms it's true, and they use some special time space magic to make it happen. Raster don't give a damn, and he unleashes his golem's magic fist on Rick. Rick manages to break free from the restraints and counters the golem's punch with his wind shot. Their attacks seem equal in strength, but suddenly the wooden golem starts splitting apart. Rick's air shot overpowers the class 8 magic and shatters the whole damn golem, sending Raster flying off. The dude crash lands in the stands, leaving everyone in the crowd shocked. Later, Rick goes to meet up with his crew, who congratulate him on his win. Elise is there too, and she tells Rick he was hella cool earlier. Just then, Raster shows up, limping and struggling from the beatdown he took before. Rick calls out to him and says the reason he won against a genius like him is because he practiced way harder. He says even though he can only use one attack, he practiced that shit way longer than anyone else and mastered it fully. Rick advises Raster to start training on one spell at a time, and the frustrated examiner just walks right past him. He tells Rick that on their next promotion exam, they're gonna meet again, and that time he gonna definitely beat him. The dude limps away with his two siblings following, but Angelica bows to Rick, and that shit confuses him. Later that night, they announce the results for the e rank promotion exams, and Rick waits patiently for his number to be called with Rianette by his side, while his crew is already off celebrating. That's it for this video, guys. If you like this new series, leave a like for the next episode. And subscribe for more Anon content. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.